Hey, what's going on guys? Mark here. For the longest time, I've wanted to make a Bluetooth speaker. My goals? To create a speaker that gets fairly loud, has a nice warm bottom end, and is completely portable. It'll have an internal amplifier that can be ran off chargeable batteries. But most of all, as you guys know that watch my channel, I do a lot of custom fabrication, so it has to be unique. I'm going to create a stacked curve shape. I'm going to do some unique machining to the front baffle, add ports and reverse mount the speakers. The list goes on. So how did I make these? What speakers did I use? What Bluetooth amplifiers? How is everything connected? That, my friends, is coming on up. Let's start with the design process. So first off, here's the speaker kit that I'm going to be using. This is from Parts Express. We have two three inch speakers along with the Bluetooth amplifier and batteries and all the different wiring that we need. I'm going to go way more into detail about all of this later in the video. Let's start with talking about the design that I've created. So you can see that I have completely modeled this. I've modeled every single layer with this shape. It has a nice curved shape. And you can also see that I have two speakers here along with two ports. Now if I hide this front baffle, you can see that inside there's actually a divider between the two sides since we're going to have a left channel and a right channel. My plan is to mount that front baffle using threaded inserts. The rear of the Bluetooth speaker will also mount in the same way. Now if I hide the back plate, this leaves this floating here. This is a plate that I've completely designed that I'll be 3D printing, and the point of this is up here at the top, it holds the three different LEDs, it also holds the power switch, it holds the volume control, it holds an auxiliary input, and it holds the input for power. By completely modeling my design on the computer here, I was able to determine the exact internal air volume along with the exact tuning frequency of the ports. And if I turn on the back plate again, just so you guys know, my plan is to mount the amplifier board right in this area here on the back side of the back plate. Let's start doing some actual fabrication. So now that I have the design complete, we're out here at the Car Audio Fabrication CNC Center. What we're going to do is we're going to start with making this front baffle piece that holds the two speakers and the ports. Now you absolutely do not have to have a CNC machine in order to make a complex shape like this. We could use different combinations of the Mobile Solutions Arc templates in order to create this complicated shape. But a couple of the reasons that I'm using the CNC is I'm actually going to be making nine of these. I'm making quite a few. The CNC comes in handy for production work. And also for an instance like this, if we zoom in on our part here, you can see that flange around the speaker cutout hole. That's because I'm going to backload the these speakers here and you can see the flange has a unique design shape and I want it to nest down in there flush. I'll still be using the routers for quite a few different steps of this process as you guys will see. Now off camera I did actually already make one because I wanted to test fit everything make sure the design was good before I made multiple of these. So for the front baffle here we're going to be using this oak wood. I've got a couple different pieces cut up already I just need to cut them down to size and let's get going. Now for those of you that are unfamiliar with CNC, I wanna give you guys a little bit of an inside look at the process because I think a lot of people have this false misconception that you just throw a piece of wood at the machine and out pops your finished part. There's definitely a little bit more to it than that. First off, I had to do a lot of learning on how this material would actually perform with the cutting bit. I had to determine my cutting speed and how deep I could plunge into the material for each pass. And luckily I was able to learn all of that on this guy here, the first one that I made. So even this, me showing you guys this for the first time is going to look a little bit more simple than what it really is. Now in my software here I did have to spend some time to tell the program so that it knows what to do for the g-code. I had to tell it that the outline here is going to cut all the way through. I had to program in that these cuts here for the speaker baffles are only going to go a sixteenth of an inch down in. I did have to tell it the same for the ports, they're gonna go about a quarter of an inch down in, except for these are these passes here are going to cut all the way through. So there's a lot of information here that needed to be plugged in. And then once I go to actually start cutting, I have to measure the material with precision and tell the machine exactly how thick the material is. I then have to make sure that everything is clamped down tight. I'm using template tape. I have to confirm the bit that I'm using here. I'm using a quarter inch bit and I've selected a specialized bit that works really good for cutting this material. And now I need to probe and determine the Z depth. 
I need to do this process in order for the machine to understand where it is height-wise in vertical space. Without doing this process, the machine might not cut into the wood at all, or it might cut far too deep into the wood, into the spoil board, and damage the machine. After I go through that process, I have to do the same for the X, Y, zero. I have to tell the machine where to start cutting from. One of the last things I need to do before I start my cut is attach the dust shoe here. This is going to pull any of the cutting dust away from the bit and suck it into the dust collection system. We are ready to go now. I just need to turn on the spindle and start the CNC machine. And I just wanted to give you guys a brief overview of that because that is the process that I'm going to have to do for literally every board. Each board has a slightly different thickness. I need to re-zero, make sure everything is good to go. And I just wanted to explain it to you guys because I think a lot of times people think that a CNC machine just makes things easy. You just throw the board on there and you're good to go. But that is not always the case. It is time consuming. And even when once I start cutting, problems can still potentially pop up. So hopefully, crossing my fingers, everything's gonna go good. Let's start the CNC. So our first cut is now complete. Now just so you guys know, on the insides here, in order to prevent that little piece from flying out once it cuts all the way through, you can see that the CNC machine leaves these little tabs. But that's something that I'm going to have to deal with over on the router. I'll start with popping this off of the template tape. And now over here at the router, in order to get rid of each of those tabs, I'm using this quarter inch spiral flush trim bit. Now you'll notice on our finished design here, we have a nice round over the edge around each of the speakers and of course around the port entrance holes. Those round overs give our baffle a nice look and it also helps to avoid port air noise on the ports here. So I need to add those to the front side of this. So I'll flip it over. We'll be cutting this side and I'm going to do so using a round over bit. So there we have those roundovers finished. You can see they give a nice look to the front of that baffle. Now something else we need to do, if we get down right here, we can see that, you know, obviously this is just a board, it's completely flat. But if we look at our one that we've already finished, if we look at it from above, you can see that it has this slight curvature. It actually curves and it nests into these on each of the sides. So see that curve, it comes out to where it's even and flush with this front piece, and then it goes back in. I think that gives it kind of a unique look you can really see it from this angle where it goes into each of the sides. We're going to accomplish that look by using the Mobile Solutions SFS Monster. The Monster here is a larger version of the SFS Animal. And what we can do with this thing is we can actually attach different pieces to the side of it that have a profile in order to actually transfer that profile to the piece. Now, normally you would use these pieces here that came with the kit, but I needed just a really, really slight curve, like barely noticeable. So I made that wooden piece using this arc here from Mobile Solutions, the number one. It's the, again, the slightest arc. So I've made those on each side and attached it. And if we flip it over here, what the monster does is you can see I've attached the workpiece using two different pieces of template tape here, and I've affixed it to that surface so it's now elevated and floating above the router bit. This router bit here is a surfacing bit. You can see that it just has a straight cut on top of it. And what's going to happen is as I rock this back and forth on those arcs, it's going to transfer that curvature to the workpiece. The reason this thing is made to be so big and made of thick acrylic and made to be super strong with these nice beefy handles here is to keep my hands away from the router bit. This is dangerous. I have to use caution when I'm doing this. Let's machine this.
That was simple enough. You can really see that curvature on the piece. So here I now have all of my baffle pieces completely machined. Everything is nice and smooth and sanded. What I need to do now is I need to add these four holes that will actually secure this into the enclosure. Now, why do I have these four bolt holes shown? Well, it's so that I can actually just detach this and pull the whole thing out as one serviceable piece in case I need to change a speaker or otherwise access the inside of the enclosure. When I did the machining with the CNC, I not only obviously cut the speaker holes and the portholes, but I also made these small locations here, and that gives me the ability to easily know exactly where I need to make each of these four holes. I start with using a punch to mark the center location of each of these holes. I then use a very small drill bit and drill through that center location. This allows me to flip over the piece and then on the opposite side, I can use a Forstner bit to create a counter bore. The final step is to drill out that small hole so that it's large enough for the bolt to go through. While I continue to make all of those holes that will mount the front baffles, I'm also using the CNC machine to be cutting my profile pieces. These profile pieces make up the shapes of the side and top of the enclosure. These particular pieces are cut from 3 quarter inch MDF and these are actually the master pieces that I'll be using in order to flush trim the rest of the pieces while I create my stack. Next, I'm going to cut all of the oversized pieces. Now these pieces match the same profile as the masters, but they are slightly oversized. In fact, they're oversized by about an eighth of an inch. So what this allows me to do is I can take one of each of my masters in order to start the stack, and I will use a nail gun with some wood glue to secure the two together. Once the pieces are secured together, I take that over to the flush trim bit on the router, and I copy that master profile. I can then continue this process as I make my entire stack. So it took quite a while, but about 104 layers later, here we are, I have all of the stacks completely made. So the next step here is I need to attach the bottom of these. Now because the bottom is flat, I left it out of the shape, that way I could nest the pieces together and get more use out of my wood material. So now I just need to cut some flat pieces using the table saw that I can then attach to the bottom of the enclosure. While I'm doing this, I will also cut a middle piece that will serve as a divider between the left and right speaker. Honestly, there's nothing too crazy going on here, but I did want to make a quick note because I do have this small curved radius on the flat part of the bottom. In order to get that board to fit in there, I did actually have to use the roundover bit and apply a slightly larger radius. And here you can see that does in fact give me the clearance to attach the bottom board. After adding that bottom board, I added the center divider and now we're good to move on. These next pieces I'm cutting are sort of a lip and they allow the front speaker baffle and the rear back of the enclosure to attach and sit down in flush. Once again, the outside profile on these pieces is cut slightly oversized intentionally. That way, once I attach them to the enclosure, I can flush trim them to a perfect shape using the router. So here we go, guys. We've got all of the shells completely made and we've added this front lip here. And obviously, if we take our baffle pieces that we made, those sit inside that lip. And I've designed these so that it has a perfect 1 16th inch gap of space completely around the outside perimeter. And that will allow me to wrap material around this face into the inside. In the meantime, the last piece I created are these guys here. I've got one that I've already finished making right here. This is going to be the back of the Bluetooth speaker. You can see that it has this hole here, and what that hole is for is my 3D printed adapter plate that I've designed. It sits down in here, and it has all the different electronics that are part of our Bluetooth amplifier board. This right here is a full set of all the different electronics that are going to go into each of these Bluetooth speakers, and I just wanted to give you guys a quick overview of the finished product before I show you guys every component. I've actually completely made all of these boards already all but just one set here. I've got one set left over because I want to show you guys the process, but I do want to extend a special thanks to Parts Express for hooking me up with all of this equipment so that I could show you guys this build that was super cool of them. And honestly, this kit that they put together makes things incredibly easy. I've tried making stuff like this before and to pick all the different gear that works together, it's kind of a pain. So it's really nice to just buy a kit that you know has been tested together already. You know that it works good together. They have good documentation here for all the different boards because there are some different accessories that you can plug into this thing. But again, the kit makes it super easy. A big thanks and thumbs up to them. To check out details of that, 
Links down in the video description. So here's the full kit here. First off, we have the AC adapter. This is just so that we can power and charge our board. So next up, we have the board itself. There's actually three different versions. I think the first one is a 15 watt. This is a two times 30 watt, and there's also a two times 50 watt. The board itself comes with a switch and some power cables, and here you can see the board. We have a secondary board for the batteries, and that comes with that secondary board, obviously, with the spots for the batteries on top here. And then it has a cable that interfaces with the Bluetooth board. Next up, we have this nice metal plate that we can use to mount the boards within the enclosure. We have some different screws and fasteners to actually secure the board to that plate. We have our batteries that we can charge up and power the board. And then we have various electronics that actually interface with the board. This is the LED kit so that we know when the Bluetooth is on, we know when it's charging, and we know when the whole Bluetooth speaker is turned on. This little port interfaces between the board itself and the AC adapter. And then this function cables package gives us volume control as well as auxiliary input. Finally, we have the speakers here, two speakers. These are three inch full range polycone drivers from Dayton Audio. Now putting these boards together is actually really simple. Each of the boards comes with a instruction manual like this. And if we open it up here, it's just a matter of determining what's what and plugging it into your board. Now guys, for the sake of time, I'm not gonna show you every single connection, but just keep in mind you have that instruction manual. It's really not that difficult. Ultimately, the completed circuit board will look something like this. I actually cannot make all my connections quite yet because I need to feed them through the back side of the board and I still need to paint these, which I'll be doing off camera. And just like that, through the magic of video editing, I have painted all the back pieces and I've also added stain and polyurethane to all of the front baffles. Now I can move on to upholstery. To wrap the enclosures, I'm using this black tweed material. To get the tweed to stick to the enclosure, I'm using contact adhesive. I follow the directions and allow the adhesive to dry before I try sticking the two surfaces together. I carefully wrap the material around that lip and push it down into the corner, and then I follow up with using a knife in order to trim away the extra material. Next, I add these threaded inserts, and these allow me to use machine screws in order to secure the front baffle and the back board. I carefully tuck in the electronics that are part of the back board and then use machine screws in order to secure that board. For the front baffle, I need to secure my ports, and I'm using inch and a half ABS pipe. I secure the ports to the front baffle using thick CA glue. I can now carefully attach the speakers to the rear of the front baffle. I connect the speaker wire leads to the speakers at the speaker terminals, and then I cover them with heat shrink and shrink it down. With the wiring and speakers secured, I can now push that front baffle into the enclosure. Just like the back of the enclosure, I'm going to secure that front baffle by using machine screws. For a final touch, I'm adding these little feet to the bottom of the speaker. These feet keep the speaker from sliding around, and it also gives it sort of a floating look. Here we have it. I've finished all nine of the Bluetooth speakers. The ninth one is over here. So now the question is, how does this sound and what are my overall thoughts of this package and how the speaker turned out? Now I'm going to give you guys a listening test in a second here, but I just want to talk about this kit first. I'm really satisfied with the way the switches work and the volume controls, and it's nice to have these little LED indicators along with that auxiliary input. But the other thing is the battery life. I'm actually really impressed with it. I had this thing at about 50% volume, and I was listening to it for well over six hours, and it kept going. I actually don't even know how long the battery life is because I got tired of testing it. I mean, more than six hours for something portable is pretty awesome. So I'm gonna give you guys a listening test. Now keep in mind that I have to use royalty-free music, but I do wanna say that this thing sounds good. These speakers actually get pretty loud with a nice amount of clarity, and they actually have some nice low end, especially based on the fact that I vented this enclosure. If you do build your own, keep in mind that it's not a subwoofer. You're not gonna be shaking the walls or anything like that, but it does have a nice warm sound. For checking out my Bluetooth speaker build. If you enjoyed this video, if you can just take a quick second, it only takes a second, hit that like button, it'd really be appreciated, and drop me a comment, let me know what you guys think down below.
If you enjoyed this video, you might like some of my other builds I've done in the past. You can check those out here on screen. A special thanks goes out to John, Brian, John, Ali, Nick, Bo, Steve, Jerry, Emmanuel, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. A big thanks to those guys for helping me with the making of these videos. If you want to learn more details about that, you can check it out down below as well. As always, my friends, thank you for watching.